Okay, hello YouTube. Here we go again. Still messing around with um, you know waste oil and waste oil burners and so on. So this is an RDB burner um, out of an old uh, oil boiler. This one's actually uh, working and okay. I just I've removed the blast tube from here, and uh, I what I've done is I've already done one. This is a, another one I have, but just to show um, how to do it, what I've done is this is the uh, the pump off the burner and what I wanted to use was the blower off the burner so the blower you know takes air in here and uh, there's a squirrel cage uh, motor and fan in in this part of the housing and it just blows air at the front so what I wanted to do was remove the pump and uh, and rewire it so that I wasn't using any of the high voltage electronics or the solenoid or whatever I just wanted to wire the capacitor the capacitor is already uh, pre-wired into the motor on these units um, so all you got to do if you want to use this particular corner, um, here we go so this particular cable this one here goes down into the motor and we've got a white wire we've got a black and a blue uh, we're just going to use the black and the blue. Uh, the white one, as far as I know, is a 50 volt back off the coil in the, uh, in the motor to feed the high voltage electronics and the solenoid and so on. So in any case, uh, we're not using it. It's actually an output from the motor. We don't need it. We're just going to input on the black and the blue. And uh, that's it. As I say, on this particular unit, the uh, capacitor is already wired. Now, the blue is actually the live. So, anyway, if you put the blue to your live wire, uh, I'm not sure what colour codes you use in America, but anyway, blue is alive and uh, black is the neutral. Okay, we're not using the white. And that's it. Um, so, I've, dis I've disconnected the, uh, the, the pump so that the motor isn't driving a dry pump. Uh, there's an, an Allen key in there, Allen key um, screw, and uh, another Allen key bolt there. So you just remove those, disconnect the, the high pressure uh, oil line from the um, from the pump, which is this this guy here. Uh, very easy to do. Just undo this, disconnect it, T disconnect the solenoid. You know, just pull the wire off it. Uh, this thing here. So you would just disconnect it like this, and um, that's it there. And uh, just remove the pump. So once those two grub screws or those two Allen screws. Are, are out of the unit, that one and this one. So you withdraw those and the pump will just lift straight out. Now all I did, and that leaves you with a blower. Now, you could use a hairdryer, you could leave, use a leaf blower, you can use anything you want, but this is just all I had in my shop. Um, and th this is actually a, a new unit, although I haven't used it in a long time. So in any case, that's, that's what I've used on, not this particular unit, but I've used one the very same as it. So, and this is the pump off the other unit, I've already taken that out. Okay, so here's so a look at the inside of the stove. This is the uh, air exhaust, if you like. It's going to blow into, into a bowl or into a pot. And underneath, <coughs> in the centre of all of that, is a half inch oil feed. So the oil feed is actually running in the middle of this one inch pipe. That one inch pipe is mild steel. Uh, we call it gun barrel steel, black metal pipe. There's a black metal fitting, one inch T piece, and I drilled. Um, I cut the the branch off the T piece, and I drilled, you know, I don't know what size, right, three quarters of an inch hole in the back of it, and that's how you can see the oil dripping. Uh, that's a bushing, an elbow screwed into the bushing, and just a half inch gate valve. Um, out of the bottom, I have the oil feed. Uh, this guy here is the oil feed, and that goes straight down the middle of that other pipe that I showed you. This one inch pipe here is connected onto a vacuum cleaner hose, and uh, it's it's just blowing rather than sucking, but it's blowing air down this one inch pipe in through that one inch T piece, and, um, and then down into the stove. So, that's the setup. Okay, so this is the burner unit, as would be seen from the back of the stove. Um, so, what I've done is, um, this one inch pipe, copper pipe, is the air intake. It just blows air straight through this, and down this one inch GB tube, gun barrel tube. So it's just, 
it's just one inch pipe, one inch mild steel pipe going up, across and here down along here and in the end of this I just blow air okay so air goes goes in through the unit so if I connect up the air it just blows out here where my where my hand is okay so this is the oil line from the back oil goes down this half inch tube in through this setup and um, it goes around the corner and goes down and the tube is inside this one inch tube so I have half inch pipe inside the one inch tube okay I'll show you that in a second but in any case this pipe doesn't you know connect internally with this pipe this one inch GB or uh, mild steel tube is um, you know is just an air duct if you like and down the center of the air duct I've got a half inch copper pipe okay so that's it so oil goes in here goes down through the side tube down along here does a bit of a 90 degrees goes down here and it's all one piece there's no joints in there and it comes out there so trying to do this with one hand so here we go and I think you can see it this is the half inch copper tube and the air blows around the outside of this so anyway the air blows out the outside and oil comes down the middle of the tube now the reason I used half inch tube as opposed to maybe 10 millimeter or or uh, smaller is because uh, some of the oil that I've used you know uh, contains impurities and uh, this won't tend to get blocked although I suppose it is possible so there's the setup so you know your setup doesn't have to be the same if anybody is thinking of doing it uh, all you got to do is have you know a tube in a tube the inner tube cont contains your oil line and the outer tube contains your air so you just got to kind of figure out a way of doing that so that's how I did it and I'm going to show how that mounts into the stove now so let's check that out so here we go okay so there's the back of the stove and I drilled um, I don't know what it is just slightly bigger than an inch uh, maybe 30 mil, something like that hole in it and what I want to do is I want for this to be able to go through so as you can see again the one handed problem so even that 90 degree 245 cuts that I put in it it goes in and it mounts like that okay so I have to put a couple of screws in it maybe I can get one in or something I don't know Let's try that. Okay. So that's how it looks from behind. Okay, I've got one screw in it. Uh, the half inch pipe again is my oil feed. Um, and the one inch pipe to the ground is my air intake. So all I'm going to do is blow air um, down the stove or down that one inch pipe and into the stove um, I mean it's easy, easy enough you'll see these on, on torque burners all over the place on YouTube so. and that's it uh, they're tech screws and, uh, and, and the reason for the flexi flu here is because I mess around with um, different stoves and I can just kind of very quickly unhook one and stick another one in.